everyone. So I'm going to try to do cancer in five minutes or less, but it is such a big and complex topic that I might go over. So what are the exemplars for cancer? We're going to do, we're going to do Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is of the lymphocytes. Think of the lymphatic system. We have leukemia, which is leukocytes. So um, with a white blood cell count, you'll see very low leukocytes um, and then lung cancer. So what is the path though? I remember this with it pisses people because when people get a diagnosis of cancer, they can get very frustrated and angry and depressed. So the, how, does it, how does it work? The first step is initiation. So the cancer cells, they create their own DNA and they damage our own normal DNA sequences. And it's also caused by exposure to um, pollution, path, like anything that, any kind of exposure that might open you up to a risk of cancer. So that's the first stage. And the second one is promotion. So where you have that repeat, repeated stress to the tissues. Remember, tissue is the issue. And so then that's when tumors start to grow, except for in blood cancers like leukemia. That's where there is no tumors. But this is the second stage where tumors um, come about, and they can either be benign or malignant. Benign is the good one. So I remember that with Lies B, so that stands for L, localized growth. I is inhibition contact with other cells. E is encapsulated growth. S is a solid mass, and B stands for regular border. So this is the good one to get if you hear you have cancer, you hear it's benign, you know, it's contained, it's not spreading, it's not um, something as much to worry about. Now malignant, remember that, like maleficent, this is the evil one, the bad one. So with M, malignant, I remember lame. L is lack of contact inhibition. It doesn't care if it's gonna hurt other tissues or organs, it doesn't care. So um, it's gonna be A, aggressive growth. It's a mean cell. Um, M is metastasis, which is just a fancy word for how the cancer spreads. Um, so it metastasizes via the blood or the lymph. And then E, it escapes into other tissues. Cancer loves to spread. So um, what are the risk factors? And two, I wanna mention this. So it spreads through the nervous system, the lymph, the interstitial fluid and the endocrine. And so too, when you um, are assessing a patient, you're gonna look at, you know, tissue is the issue. So you wanna get a sample of their tissues by doing, you know, a bone marrow biopsy or to do a pap smear. Um, there's many tests to do. It depends on the type of cancer, um, but you can also do labs, a CBC with a white blood cell. You can do a PSA for prostate. Um, it really much, like it just depends. If they do find a tumor, they use the TNM. This is the grading system that we need to know, which stands for tumor, node, and metastasis. Again, remember, metastasis is how it spreads. And this is how they grade the cancer with TNM. So um, with a patient that comes in with cancer, you know, we either try to cure, which, you know, means it goes away forever. Like that's what everybody hopes for, but not everybody gets. Control it um, by controlling, by putting patients in remission where they still have the cancer, but they don't have those symptoms. We're managing those symptoms well. And palliative care is finally where they don't respond to initial treatment, but we are gonna still provide comfort measures, maybe try other treatments, but you know you have to prepare them for um, end of life care. So what symptoms is a patient with pain, um, cancer going to present with? So we have a little acronym, whatever, of caution. So they're gonna have a change in bowel and bladder. They're gonna have a, a sore that does not heal. For you, they're gonna have unusual bleeding. For T, a thickened lump. Um, I, indigestion. O, a obvious change in a molar wart, like with melanoma. N, a nagging cough or hoarseness, which is found with lung cancer. And anorexia, cachexia, or whatever, how, how you pronounce it. That is just a wasting of fat and muscle that you see in cancer patients. So how are we gonna treat it? Um, so there's many different um, pharmacotherapies, but I just wanna do stuff that I think is gonna be important to know. And I know methotrexate is gonna be 
Um, the first thing you're going to use, it's an anti-neoplastic, which is a fancy word for chemotherapy drugs. Um, that is going to decrease that DNA cancer production because remember cancer cells, um, you know, they make their own DNA sequence. They um, disrupt our normal DNA sequence. So this is going to decrease that from happening with methotrexate. Rituximab, <laughs> it targets the cancer specifically. So some anti-neoplastics are broad spectrum. They'll just try to attack any cancer cells. Whereas this one, it'll target it specific. And then tamoxifen, which is a hormone cancer drug. So some um, cancers feed off hormones. Like with prostate, they feed off testosterone. With ovarian or breast cancer, it feeds off estrogen. So we want to decrease those hormone levels. It's cutting off the food supply. And a big medication that changed... Um, a lot of lives for patients is Zofran because chemotherapy drugs can make you nauseous. It's an anti-nausea. Um, you know, they also give anti-diarrheals, magic mouthwash for mouth sores, appetite stimulants, a megase or medical marijuana. Um, and then, you know, again, besides medication therapy, um, they can do radiation therapy. Be careful of your skin. Um, bone marrow transport, transplants, surgery. Um, and then finally, just with nursing diagnosis, there's so many of them, but you just want to look at the symptoms and see what would be a good fit for them. So overall, that's all I have for cancer. Sorry, it went over.